I've spent months manually sending emails like this, but then I learned about N8N, which lets you connect different tools and create extremely overpowered workflows. So if you'd like to spend $29 and potentially get thousands of dollars in new clients, stick around till the end of the video and let's dive in. What's up everyone, this is Ben with God of Prompt, and before we get started, remember to check out any of the free digital products God of Prompt offers in the description below, and subscribe so you don't miss any of our value-packed episodes. Here's the cost uh, to run this thing monthly, so for n 8 n Cloud, if you don't already have that, that's 24 bucks a month. Your open AI calls, so this is when we're talking to AI, it's going to be relatively cheap, maybe less than 5 bucks a month. Unipile is what we're using to send LinkedIn messages, which is optional, so we'll be focused Focusing on the email portion of this. Looking at our finished flow here, we're using Google Sheets as our database, and we've already made that database of leads in another video. And we'll link that video below, but effectively that video told you how to set up this Excel sheet and how to populate it with all of your desired leads data. So for this video, I'm gonna assume you've already built your lead generation funnel. I'm using this test sheet, which is just an email address that I own, so I'm not spamming people for this, just to test out my flow. But yeah, I'll just show the columns of this Excel sheet real quick in case you want to mimic it. And once you've got your own copy of your leads database here in your own drive, we can go back to N8N and create a new workflow. Our first node is going to be a schedule trigger and we'll trigger it once every day at 3 p.m. And what are we doing here? We're fetching the leads and checking if they've been emailed and if they've responded yet. So we're going to get all the rows in our Excel sheet if it's your first time setting this up, you'll want to add a new credential and log in with your Google account that has your copy of your leads database in there. When you update your credentials, you may have to select uh, the right document, right? You might have named it uh, something different. So make sure you select your document and your sheet from here. We're gonna loop over all the items in our Excel sheet, which is only one for the time being. And we add an if node and we say, if the message ID is empty, that's this field here. If the message ID is empty, like that, we're gonna assume that is a new row that we have just recently scraped. So we want to send our first outreach email, All right? So we're checking to see if they've emailed, check if they've responded. And in this case, we wanna send our first email. If we've already sent the first email, we we'll wanna go to a different route and send the follow-up emails. The check for replies part will run in the background. And this is the part that catches if your lead has replied. And if so, it will not uh, do any of these steps up here. After they've already responded to you, you don't want to send an automatic, uh, an automated follow-up. So before we send the first email, we're going to set a couple of variables. We're going to talk about our business and the person that we're about to email. The reason why we do this is because in our next step, we're going to send a message to artificial intelligence with this data in mind so it'll be able to craft that highly personalized first email so back in this step we're setting two variables about our business which you'll have to replace with um, whatever you want the ai to know about your business your offering that you're trying to sell and we're also passing in everything we know about this person in this second field here next step is an open ai mode so we're just getting an artificial intelligence completion you'll need to add a new credential if it's your first time so it's asking for an API key. That's the mandatory field. To get that, you go to platform.openai.com slash API dash keys. Hit create a new secret key. Name it something, create the key, copy that. Go back to your workflow and paste that in. Hit save. You may need to like log into this portal here and enter your billing info to get your API key. Once we've done that, we can change you know our prompt to the AI. We're, right now we're saying act like a senior email marketing strategist. The goal is not to pitch or sell directly, but to open a natural line of conversation. You will be given these two things and here's where we give them. Remember we set them in this uh, previous step and we're just saying write a three line email body in plain friendly English. A uh, pro tip here is we're asking it to return your response in this JSON structure, and you'll see how that will come in handy in a second. So if you execute this node, you can see we get the email body in three separate sections. That's one really cool kind of cheat code about N8N. When you tell it to return 
uh, when you tell an AI model to return the response in JSON, and it then automatically parses the response. Here, you can see we said subject line, email body, subject line, email body. Now let's send this AI generated text in an email. So we add a send message node. So Gmail requires a different login than Google Sheets. So you just open this guy. Um, this will be blank when you first open it up. You'll create a new credential and add the same, well, yeah, add the Google account that you want your email to come from. And you wanna copy what I have here for this node. So all we're saying is we want to send a message to the JSON uh, email address in this step if no email sent. So if we open this guy up, there's an email address that we pulled from our Google Sheet. The subject line here is coming from the OpenAI response. Remember, it automatically parsed that JSON for us. The body of the email is simply email body 0, 1, and 2 there. You can just drag these fields in when you're making your own flow. Uh, it's important to update your sender name and when the user or lead replies to your email, they're gonna send it to this address that you've typed in down here. So let's pin the data from this AI response, right? We've already got a personalized uh, email. Now if we run this step on its own, we can see a new email here from myself. Yeah, super simple personalized email. And you can see we're not hard selling here just opening the lines of communication. All right, so that was our first email for the Gmail portion. If you wanted to add the optional LinkedIn portion, here's where you would do it. So I'm gonna open these nodes one at a time. This is the HTTP request to fetch the LinkedIn data. So you'll call that uh, API endpoint with the LinkedIn username. Scrolling down here, you'll wanna send uh, query parameters, uh, the account ID, the value as well as the API key and value, which uh, you'll get from your uh, Unipile website, the same way we did for the API keys for OpenAI. Just copy and paste that information into here. Here's a five second wait because we're calling a similar API one after another, so you don't wanna get timed out, so we have a five second wait. And this is what will send the LinkedIn invite using this URL. Again, you guys can pause the video and take a screenshot of any of these. Here are the headers that we're sending, the API key, here's the body we're sending, account ID, once again, looks like a provider ID and the message itself, which comes from our uh, AI step. Then we add here what's called an edit fields step like that or set and we're just mapping data from previous steps to the data we'll need you know all of these correspond with the columns in our sheet here so if you can guess what our next step is going to be we're going to update our google sheet so remember we mapped all this data here in that last step we just got to connect to the same credential that we have been for the rest of the flow make sure your document is the right one and the sheet you say map each column manually and we can match on the row number because we've passed that through from a previous step. Here are the other values we're updating here. So right now we have blank here and if we hit execute step, override the past data. And there we go, these four fields have been populated and we'll use this data and the rest of our flow as different checks basically. So now we've sent our first email, updated the Google Sheet that we've done that. But what if once a day when this thing wakes up and triggers, the first email was sent, but if there was no reply yet. This is just another if node. And we're just checking if this was replied field, right? If we find this here, over here, if was replied is empty, so that would be true, we're gonna do something over here and send a follow-up email. So this will be just a code node. Make sure you're on run once for all items. So here is the code for this step. I'm gonna pause here real quick and you guys can screenshot it and bring it into your own. And if we hit execute step, we get the body. So it says it's our first email in our sequence. I know you're busy and it says the difference in days from when the first email was sent is one. So I know I don't like looking at code either, but <laughs> it's uh, pretty intuitive if you take your time. So we see if the difference in days is one, we send the first uh, email in our sequence. If the difference in days is three, we send the second one and so on. 
all the way up to 30 days. This is our last message here, right? So now that we've got the body of the email we want to send as our follow-up, let's add a reply to a message step from Gmail. Go ahead, come in here, add your credentials. We're grabbing the message ID of the last thing that had no reply, and the text comes from our body of our uh, last step. So if we think about this logically, we're checking if something had uh, no reply, right? So obviously here that's blank. So that's what's saying, hey, continue and aid end flow. If there is no reply, we grab the message ID from this step and we're just replying to that message with the body from our code snippet there that was determining which message we send. So remember we had this first email but that was personalized with AI. If we execute this other guy here, we should see a response to this email. There we go. There's uh, the initial one here that was sent nine minutes ago. And here's the one we sent zero minutes ago that's just, just floating to the top of your inbox. Now, obviously these would be a day apart um, when you're just running your flow like normal, but we're just testing it. In reality, if you're sending out uh, cold emails to people within minutes, you have a really high chance of being sent to the spam folder. So awesome, our first follow-up email was sent. We can add another set node here. And in this one, we're just gonna do some manual mapping to update the number of emails sent to add one. And we also set the row number here. And we need the row number because now that we've done all this, we wanna update this guy and show that, hey, or not that it was replied, but that an additional email has been sent and especially not that it was replied. So let's update our Google Sheet. Update row and sheet. And you'll wanna use the same credentials you've used previously. Find the same Excel doc, same sheet. We're matching on the row number, which is why we set that previously. And we're only updating number of emails sent. So whereas just the first one, we only sent one after running this, we should see this gets updated to two. So we know exactly where we're at in our cold email sequence. There it is. So this is the entire flow of actually generating and sending the emails. The last thing you're gonna wanna do is bring in the end of this flow to the loop over items part so that it'll do these steps for every single row in your Excel sheet. It'll always check if something had no email sent or if there was no reply. But what if your prospect did reply? Well, you don't wanna keep sending these emails. So we're gonna build a little subflow down here that checks if the message was in fact replied to so that this node can check if there's no reply. So we want something that's going to populate this field so that when this says, hey, I'm gonna check if this was replied field is empty, it's gonna return false, false right here, and that flow will end. We're gonna start with a schedule trigger, whereas the other one was every day at 3 p.m., this one's gonna be every day at 2 p.m because we want to make sure that this column is populated with something before this flow runs. And you know, you might accidentally send an email to someone if this one doesn't run first. Next step is gonna be a get rows in Google Sheets. Same thing, enter your credentials. And here we're only gonna get rows where was replied is blank. So if we execute this, we should get one item. Next step is a split out node where we're just taking out the thread ID here, that thread ID. So if we execute this, bam, that's all we're left with. Adding another if, if the thread ID is not empty, I'm gonna connect this with another uh, loop um, just for readability. We're gonna add the Gmail get a thread step. We're gonna make the loop go to the get a thread step for Gmail. Again, select your account and put this in the thread ID. So when you execute it, it'll grab the thread ID from the last step. Here's your output, which is the entire thread. So you might have multiple messages in there. Then we add a code step. And if I show you all this code here, this is everything. All it does is check if my email is not present in the from field. So you'll have to update this with your email, but it's saying if there's any email in the thread that's not from me, from this email, 
that means someone else has replied. So in this case, it's read through all the stuff and it does not have a reply, right? It's only been me that's been sending emails. So since there was no response, it's false. It's just gonna die right here, this part of the flow. Well, I'm gonna let you in on a pro tip. We gotta go back to this get a thread step. We can actually edit fields for testing purposes. We wanna find our from fields and update it away from Ben at Scaling Sidekick, which is what we defined in our code, to anything else, anything that breaks that uh, string. Here's the other from field that I've edited to be test instead of Ben. So if we save that, now we can test the flow as if we did have someone reply. And then the reply thing is true here with the actual reply. Then we just check if it's true, right? Check if that last step was true if so it passes that data along to the output and then we add another update row in google sheet step and got to make sure we have the same account same document same sheet we're matching the column on the row number from this step the if thread id is not empty if thread id is not empty we pull in the row number from there we update the was replied field to yes and also the reply column to the reply itself. So now every day this will run before your main flow that's actually sending out the email. So hopefully it should mark everything as it's gotten a reply. And then these two steps will figure that out and not send an email if that's the case. If you guys run into any sort of issues, be sure to leave a comment or here is the readme that we have here. Feel free to pause this thing and take a look at it. And now we've built from scratch an automated cold email sequencing flow in N8N. So if you made it this far, be sure to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss another overpowered N8N automation build. Anyway, that's it for today's video. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.